I welcome to the redo of the sixth rule of acquisition. Prior knowledge is problematic. The reason why this is a redo is because I came up with a really, really, really good, or I found a really, really good expression that's in common knowledge expression that hit the nail on the head better than the examples I had, and I also added better examples. So basically, prior knowledge can either be helpful or hurtful to scientific progress. This presentation will highlight the cases where prior knowledge hinders scientific progress. And here's the old expression, if all you have is a hammer, then all of your problem will begin to look like nails. And let me show you the examples. Prior to the nuclear era, the only method that man knew for, to make light and heat was fire. And that's what they thought in the scientific journals and the books of the day, they thought the sun was a big burning ball of coal. And in fact, they were so happy with themselves because the calculations they did, the mathematical proofs that they had aligned that the age of the sun aligned with the biblical interpretation of the age of the earth of 6,000 years. See all this mathematical proofs. I love all these mathematical proofs. Again, if all you know about is fire, then everything hot and bright must be fire. And you notice how modern clip art represents the sun as a ball of flames. The sun again. The modern nuclear gives us nuclear reactions as a more powerful emitter of heat and light. So now the sun is thought to be a nuclear reactor. No consideration at all that it may be something more in spite of the fact that we can't create a sustained fusion reaction in a laboratory. And again, if the hottest thing you know about is nuclear power, then the sun must be nuclear powered. And I'm not saying that nuclear power isn't a component of the sun, but ethereal mechanics says there's a lot more going on than that. That the, those nuclear reactions is part of what's going on. It's not the full story, in my opinion, of course. Life. It was assumed that the conditions necessary for life elsewhere in the universe had to be identical to those on the surface of the earth. Again, if only life you know about exists in a warm, sunny, oxygen-rich environment, then all life must exist in a warm, sunny, oxygen-rich environment. Then in 1979, Alvin, a deep-sea submersible, found life thriving in conditions once thought to be too caustic. Incredible pressure, 400 degrees Celsius, I believe, with hydrogen sulfide gas venting all around. Conditions that would kill any other known life on the planet. And these life forms were thriving. And it blew away our notion of what we thought had to be the absolute truth. When I was searching for new induction, I was stumped. Because my training, my prior knowledge, told me that it had to be an inverse square relationship. And I tried hand integration for months before I finally gave up and said, you know what, I'm going to write a computer program that's going to do numerical integration, and I'm going to have it try 40, everything I could think of, the kitchen sink, it turned out to be 45,000 different combinations of mathematical expressions that I could put together. And it returned some I would never have guessed. It returned an inverse relationship with distance, not an inverse square. Something I would have never picked if I had to waste time hand integrating myself. And it shows you how your own knowledge can blind you to possibilities. SETI, if all you know about are transverse EM waves, and obviously that's what the ETs will have too. How stupid are we? No consideration that they may be using something so advanced it traverses a distance of space faster than visible light. Sun God, if the only animate thing you know about are alive, then obviously a living creature must be moving the sun across the sky. I'm sure there's many more examples than the ones I've demonstrated. And again, the, the best expression, when all you have is a hammer, then everything begins to look like a nail. Prior knowledge is problematic. Keep your eyes open and keep your mind open too. Thank you very much. Please, if you could donate, you go to my website, which is woefully out of date. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to putting it up to date. I'm having too much fun making these YouTube videos. Uh, eventually, I'd like to get an index of all the videos on the site so people can search 
from the site, but um, I was hoping to do that over the winter break, but I got caught up in so many other things. But there is a donate button if you want to donate to the cause. Uh, try to get the word out. Give me thumbs up because I, somehow I'm told all that helps. I'm not sure. I'm not a mass media expert, but I really would like to get more traffic to the site. If I can get you know, hundreds of thousands of hits, that would be great. If there's a way I can improve the videos, let me know. I'm trying to just get the information out in the quickest way possible so I don't have a lot of graphics and stuff like that. Uh, maybe, well, anyway, thank you very much.